Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. You know, I'm currently reading a book about anti-gravity. I can't put it down. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Star Trek Missions from WizKids. Hello everybody, we'll get back to the review in just a second. I just want to take a moment to ask you to go ahead and check out and subscribe to my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check that out, please subscribe, and now, back to the review. In Star Trek missions from WizKids, two to six players attempt to create the most victory points out of combinations from their favorite characters, situations, events, etc. from Star Trek The Next Generation. Essentially, there are two types of cards in this game. There are mission cards and there are galaxy cards. Now, the galaxy cards have all sorts of different things. For, for instance, there's different types. There's personnel, there's characters, there's ship systems, there's locations, etc., etc., etc. There are specialities, there are ambassadors, there are combat, there's medical, there's all sorts of things there as well. Next, there's life form. Is it a human? Is it a Klingon? Is it a Ferengi? Is it any one of the many, many, many different species from Star Trek? Then there's also the affiliation. Do you belong to the Federation, the Romulan Star Empire, the Klingon Empire, the Ferengi Alliance? And finally, there's specific text unique to that card. Now, the mission cards are similar, but unlike the galaxy cards that have all of this information, the mission cards only have text. Now, at the beginning of the game, each player is going to get two mission cards and five galaxy cards. The galaxy deck and the mission deck will then be set side by side, and you'll have to have a pretty big discard area, because all these cards, when they go down, are going to be able to come back into the game. Now, on your turn, there's three things you can do. First of all, you can take any one card from the discard area, put it in your hand, and then take a card from your hand and put it in the discard area. You can go ahead and take the top card from the Galaxy deck, put it in your hand, and then take one card from your hand and put it in the discard area. Finally, you can take two cards from the Mission deck, put it in your hand, and then pick any two cards to put into the discard area. But you must always have at least one Mission card in your hand, and you can never have more than two Mission cards in your hand. Now, you go around and around doing this until there are at least 8 Galaxy cards or 12 Mission cards in the discard area. If that is the case, then the game immediately ends. Players now look at each of their cards, uh, one at a time, and they see how they score off of the other cards in your hand. For instance, some cards might say things like, um, you know, you get you know, points for every uh, Klingon you've got in your hand, or you may get points for every non-Federation Captain card you have. But there's different combinations, different things you're looking for, so you're trying to make the cards mix, mix and match to the best of your abilities, and then when you go to scoring, you're scoring each of the cards. What kind of uh, point values do you get for each card? Some cards may not score anything, but they can help you score score the other cards. So you go through, you add up all the cards, and whoever has the highest score wins Star Trek Missions. Star Trek Missions is based on the Fantasy Realms game system. Now, I have never played the Fantasy Realms game, so I'm not familiar with the original game. However, I did recently play uh, Red Rising from Stonemaier Games, which also has a very similar kind of system where you're taking cards, getting rid of cards, and trying to build the best hand for scoring purposes. Now, I really liked Red Rising, and I thought it was fun, and it had more of a board game feel, because you do literally have a board, you have components you're, you're using here and there, but fundamentally it was a card game. Here, there's no pretense. It's just the cards. It's all about the cards in Star Trek Mission. Now, I'm a big Star Trek fan. I grew up watching Next Generation, so I, I, I'm a sucker for the theme, although I have played some Star Trek games that weren't that great, but I generally I like a Star Trek theme. It's something I'm very familiar with and has a very special place in my heart. And growing up, um, I think objectively, I think of all the Star Trek series, I think in a lot of ways the original series was the best, but TNG has a very, very special place in my heart, because like I say, I grew up with it as a kid. 
And just, if I can take a moment, what a great show for a kid, a teenager to watch. I cannot tell you how much I learned about politics, diplomacy, literature, theater, um, science, history. There's so much in that show that I learned that I have taken with me my whole life. Um, I'm so grateful to the producers of that show because that truly is a great show for, for, for young people to watch. And I'm, I'm so grateful I had that TV show on when I was a kid um, just because, as I, as I say, I learned so much from it. Having said that, let's look at this game. Um, I, right off the bat, I will tell you, this is a fun game. It's a competitive game. And it's a, it's a hard game in the sense, it's not hard to learn, but it's a hard game in the sense that you're trying to build the best combinations, but you have to make sacrifices. Okay, I can, I can get this, it's going to score these cards, but i got to give something up. Well, I guess I can give this one up, but then I lose scoring these cards. So this, this game is constantly tough choices. You're constantly trying to build the best engine here with your cards, and oftentimes that means sacrificing other parts of, of an engine the, of the engine that, that, that you wanted to build. So it's a very, very um, there's a lot of complex co complex calculations you're doing in your head. Complex, cal not really, but I mean there's there's a lot of math you're doing in your head, and there's a lot of of uh, um, kind of horse trading you're doing with yourself in this game, and then to which do you draw from? Do you look at the discard? Is there something on the discard you can use? Or do you take a chance with new mission cards or with with new gal a new galaxy card? And so there's good choices there. Now again, this is not a long game, right? This is this is a 20 minute game. Again, if this were an hour game, it might kind of fall flat for me. Now I li really liked Red Rising, but that was kind of my problem with Red Rising. It seemed like toward the end of Red Rising, um, it, it was kind of running out of steam for me. And it kind of felt like I knew what I wanted to do, this is the hand I wanted to play, but you still kind of had to go through the motions. I did get a little bit of that with Red Rising. I don't get that here. I get, you know, here I feel like there's a good pace and you're kind of eyeing the cards in the in the um, discard to see, okay, are we close? Are we getting close? Okay, what can I do? And then sometimes it's literally, it is just a thing of, okay, I draw a card, nope, don't want that. Okay, draw a card, don't want that. But it happens so quick, it, it doesn't really bog down the game. When you get the hand you, you, you feel you want, it's not long before the game ends here. So played a few games of this. Now, I've only played a two-player. My friend Kim was over, and we played it a few times, and we had a lot of fun with it. Um, but uh, so, so I haven't played it with more players. And it's possible with more players, some AP can set in. It could bog down the game. But I still don't think that would kill it for me. Um, but when when, when the, I was playing with Kim, the two-player game, it was just boom, 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 boom. I mean, we were pretty quick, and it was, it was moving pretty quickly there. So I really, really got a kick out of Star Trek missions. I think for a light card game, an opener, a filler. I think this is a fantastic game. Highly recommend uh, Star Trek Missions for what it is. Buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, please check out my uh, other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check it out, please subscribe, and please give a thumb to this channel on Board Game Geek. That helps us out a lot as well. You know, ladies and gentlemen, the older I get, the more I just wish I could find someone that looked at me the way Data looked at Spot. Please somebody help me on my feet again, and I don't know where I'm going. Because of budget cutbacks, the Earth Star Alliance has only given us one escape pod.